A very good afternoon to all. I, Chetana HD, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science and a faculty member of WING, would like to welcome you all to this three days workshop on Network Simulators organized by Department of Computer Science and Engineering in association with WING in collaboration with UCSP NIE Mysore. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome Dr. Ravi Kumar V, HOD, Department of Computer Science and Engineering for this workshop. I welcome you, sir. I extend, you, my, warm, I extend my warm welcome to our big panel for Dr. Gujarat HL and Professor Chan V for this workshop. I welcome you, sir. I welcome you, ma'am. I extend my warm welcome to Dr. Vidal, Assistant Professor and UCSP Coordinator, Department of DCD, NIE Mysuru, in this afternoon. I extend my warm welcome to all the participants for three days of the Network Simulator. I welcome you. Now, I request Dr. Ravi Kumar V, Professor and Head, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, VBC Mysuru to say a few words. Uh, uh, good afternoon to one and all. Uh, Dr. Gururaj Achal, uh, the resource person as well as the, the wing coordinator, uh, Dr. Chetana Achal and uh, uh, other faculty members and my dear students and uh, faculty member from the other uh, institution also. And also I thank uh, UCSC uh, NIE for uh, having collaboration with the uh, wing. So I hope uh, uh, Dr. Gururaj Achal is doing his uh, best from past many years from our institution being a resource person for this particular uh, workshop i mean it's a particular topic uh, network simulator and also he has his own uh, youtube channel also i think uh, these three day workshop will uh, enlighten all of you on the how to use the simulator uh, network simulator and also it helps the students of fifth semester to use the simulator in their lab i hope uh, dr guraj actual will uh, give more light on this particular uh, topic uh, this workshop will uh, enable the faculty members to take up some research also. So with this, I wish this workshop to be a fruitful and uh, thank you. Uh, over to you, madam. Thank you, sir. Now I request Professor Swati BH, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Gururaj Hitch. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, all. It's my immense pleasure to introduce today's resource person, Dr. Gururaj Hechal. Dr. Gururaj Hechal joined the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at Malnad College of Engineering as assistant professor in July 2013. Currently, he is working as an associate professor in Computer Science and Engineering with Vardhaka College of Engineering, Mysuru. He received Young Scientist Award for international travel grants from I, ITS SERP DST, Government of India, in December 2016. He has been involved in research projects in a range of settings, including agriculture, health, education, arts, culture, and community. He leads the research and development community wing, that is, Wireless Internetworking Group. He is the author of over 75 publications and he is currently on the editorial board of three international peer reviewed journals. He has served on numerous conference program committees and also as chairperson. He is a multidisciplinary computer scientist who has worked on computer network and its application for the past nine years. His contribution towards QoS aware network congestion control, network security, cloud computing, and machine learning is tremendous. He delivered many technical talks and honored as resource person in various national workshops on network simulators. He is an ACM professional member and faculty sponsor of ACM VVC ACM chapter. We are very much fortunate to have as our today's resource person, sir, I welcome you. Thank you, uh, you ma'am. 
now i request dr gururaj sir to take over the session over to you sir uh good afternoon everyone uh, respected uh, head of the department uh, dr ravi kumar v sir uh, faculty uh, program coordinators uh, uh, professor chetna hc and uh, professor pati bh uh, i i'll i'll start the session without taking uh, much delay on uh, other aspects uh, so with the able guidance and support of our hod we we have conducting the same workshop from past many years and now uh this i think there is a fourth or fifth workshop i don't remember uh we are we are having in our institution the same workshop uh, network simulator and once uh, initially once we prepared the manual for this almost all parts of the karnataka all the colleges they are using the same manual what we from the vidyavadaka what we prepared uh so guys we'll start with the uh, things uh i i'll i'll go with the brief, brief introduction towards network simulators why we require network simulators and why they had incorporated in your syllabus and uh, other things and later on i'll go with uh, uh, the concepts of uh, in detail concepts of sim syntax and semantics of network simulators too and i'll go with the hands on experience for you people because you have to see how it executes you have to see how the trace file works and all so uh, without wasting the time uh, let me give the brief introduction towards network simulator network simulator or simulator if you would have heard of this name Uh, immediately i think uh, it's an animation kind of uh, operation correct no so here network simulator uh, i think uh, in the previous semester you might have been uh, studied like uh, p spice simulator in uh, ld or some logic design subject and all uh, similarly why we have to go for simulator before constructing any home or any building what we'll do initially we have to go for the plan correct no we'll call it as blueprint okay so why we have to go for blueprint because i don't know whether how much elevation how much you know how much bricks or how much sand or how much you know all the materials required for constructing the building okay simply start constructing without planning and all it 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 will be of no usage correct so in a similarly network simulator is very much required before constructing or before deploying a any networks okay it might be local area network it might it might be a wide area network or larger networks or uh, campus networks whatever the type of network if we have a plan okay accordingly we can able to go with the operation okay so there by which we can able to uh, you know uh, predict or able to analyze how much bandwidth i require how much you know uh, uh, delay I, i it may occur all the things we can able to see with the help of the plan such planning can be done with the help of one of the finest simulator what we have called as ns2 or we can also call it as network simulator 2 okay so uh, quickly go with the uh, details of that uh, so uh, so uh, network simulator 2 okay uh, the 2 you might have a uh, like a question what is a 2 why can't we have only ns or network simulator that 2 is a version okay immediately there will be a question okay oh, we don't have a network simulator one yes it was uh, emerged and immediately it collapsed because of major pitfalls in that version okay nobody is going to use network simulator one version and one of the stabilized network simulator category is ns2 okay and it is an open source simulator and it is uh, freely downloadable you can use or you can build your own modules whichever you want okay all these features can be incorporated with the help of network simulator 2 that is a fantastic feature what we have in case of network simulator 2 okay and it was developed by uc berkeley i think uh, majority of the students you people have heard of this university uc berkeley and uh, and why it is tricky why not so simple okay so usually people will have a question okay uh, network simulator that to especially in ns2 if you have heard uh, it's somewhat complicated language why it's called as somewhat difficult language because uh, if you have taken java python or any other language they used to follow only one syntax and one semantics okay but in case of ns2 they used to follow two syntaxes okay one c++ or else i can call it as uh, uh, object oriented language and the other one called as command language okay it's a, it's a combined language and this to say combined language okay and that is a major uh, reason why somewhat it is the syntax and semantics are initially very difficult to understand but once you are well versed with the things you can able to do whatever uh, uh, the programming and all you want okay and after some days once you are well versed with this you can able to build your own protocols okay below me or not 
many of my students they build up their own protocols they come up with their uh, on a, on a protocol changes or protocol versions and uh, they uh, they they publish the papers and all okay so uh, initially you might feel difficult but i'll tell you the basics of each and every point whatever the knowledge i have i'll share with you guys okay so it is a combined language hence it is called as otcl okay why it's called as otcl the language is called as otcl the reason is that uh, it's a combined language o is nothing but object oriented tcl is nothing but tool command language hence this language is called as otcl language okay commonly people will call ns2 language as tcl we can also call it as tcl by default object oriented will be used or else specifically you can use it as otcl okay that is one important thing you have to remember ns2 follows two languages two combined languages one is object oriented principles not co constantly c++ for your understanding we used to call it as c++ not only c++ whatever the uh, basic programming uh, of object oriented you know you can uh, have that in your mind okay along with that we have command language okay what is command language can uh, any any examples for command language the better example is unix linux and all correct no so uh, it's a combined language of uh, that unix or linux along with this object oriented and commonly we can call it as otcl okay and this language one more feature is it's a discrete event driven simulator there are basically two types of simulators one is time driven simulator and second one is event driven simulator as the name itself tells about the simulator time driven simulator is a category of simulator where in which we have to give importance towards events okay uh, sorry time okay uh, where if, I'll, I'll give an example for that but in case of event driven simulator we never bother about the time okay uh, it will always talks about the completion of the event will give importance towards event i'll give an example okay I want to go from, uh, for example, Vidyavadaka College of Engineering to bus stand or suburb bus stand. Okay, how that is a task. That's an event, for example. Okay, if it is an event-driven simulator, I don't know how much time I'll take to reach the destination. The complete event has to be completed in case of event-driven simulator. But in case of time-driven simulator, I'll fix up the time. For example, five minutes or ten minutes or ten seconds, whatever the time it might be, wherever. May, might be the destination i may reach uh, for example uh, the next uh, you know stop or i may reach railway station or i may reach in between but as the time completes i have to shut down the operation okay so in case of event driven simulator will give importance to the completion of the event in case of time driven simulator will give importance to the completion of the time okay that is a major difference okay but in case of this ns2 it is an event driven simulator we will bother always about the completion of the event not about the time okay and time will explicitly will be, will be given by the user i can take for example i'll give an explicit time as first second to five seconds of first uh, minute to 10 minutes kind of thing. We'll see those examples while explaining the programming structures. I think you'll get to know all the things. Okay. And uh, this is not only used for uh, the lab purpose and all, this is widely, widely used by many researchers across globe. Okay, my dear friends, it's not only restricted to the laboratory purpose or something like that. In the decades of 1990s until 2015, it was rigorously used by many researchers across globe, across globe. Okay, a lot of, lot of papers, a lot of, you know, new protocols. They examined, they validated with the help of network simulator to protocol, uh, I mean, simulator. And as I said, it is an open source and free. And uh, I think if it, you know the difference between proprietary softwares and open source softwares. Proprietary softwares is a version, whatever the limitation bounded or they had given, we have to use the same functionalities. But in case of open source, it's not like that. Uh, we can add up our own features or we can build our own module. We can examine that module with the help of the tool. Uh, that's the meaning of open source, okay? Free is something, but it's, uh, it's not going to have any cost. Uh, uh, it's capita free uh, software, okay? And uh, this mainly works on wired and wireless networks. Okay, so this NS2 mainly works on wired and wireless networks. There is a third. Uh, there are basically three types of networks. One is wired networks, wireless networks, and uh, semi-wireless networks. Wired networks is something that you can assume your lab, where in which we have a continuous, you know, uh, a data cable connection between the devices, or it might be uh, to the electric power and all. That is our Ethernet cable, what we have. That's a better example for wide networks, okay? Or else you can imagine your uh, telephones, old telephones, uh, what you have in your homes and all. That's a better example for the 
uh, the better example for wide networks. In case of wireless network, uh, uh, in case of wireless networks, it's not like that. We don't have any connection or physical connect cable connection between the devices. That is a better example for wireless networks. Okay. There is a third category called category called as semi wireless network. Okay. Uh, as the name itself indicates, semi is nothing but half. Half wide networks and half wireless network. Okay, that network is called as combined network is called as semi wireless network. Okay, so that is one more important category. What we have: wide networks, wireless networks, and semi wireless networks. Okay, I'll give a better example for that. I have a cable connection uh, with the help of landline phones. That is purely uh, a wide network. If I want to make a call from that landline device to one more landline device or landline phone, that connection is purely wide networks. If I would have made a call. From landline device to mobile device. That's an example for semi wireless networks. Correct. Why it is semi wireless? Because landline is a wide network, mobile device is a wireless network. The third category, what we have called as, uh, I, I know, uh, the other one called as wireless network, where a communication call between mobile device to other mobile device. We don't have any communication, I mean, you know, physical connection between those two devices. Okay. So uh, this network simulator two will support mainly for wide networks and wireless network. It will not support semi wireless network. I'll tell you the greater details of uh, that. Why it's not supports. I think, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, after a few time. Okay. And uh, usually the main uh, concept of this, you know, ideology of using the programming language of two different categories. The reason is that uh, we have four, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, we have uh, two ends. One is uh, front end and back end. If I know just TCL combined language, I can able to do some operation on front end. I can able to create the nodes. I can do the communication and all. If you want to build some uh, uh, some uh, modification in the protocol or some uh, network simulate, I mean network concepts and all, you have to know very particularly about C, uh, any uh, object oriented language. Okay. Uh, that is the uh, thing uh, uh, for the laboratory purpose. You can able to, I mean, if you learn TCL perfectly, it's fine. But when it comes to the point of year, you know, if you want to do something on that, if you want to go for the advanced thing and all, you have to do particularly, uh, you have to learn particularly both the languages completely thoroughly. Okay. This is the architecture of Network Simulator 2. Uh, let me explain. If you learn this architecture perfectly, you can able to analyze all the codes of your, I mean, all the program codes of your syllabus, Aram say, okay, without, uh, not only the program codes, I mean to say, whatever the TCL program you want to do it, the complete TCL programming can be done, Aram say, with the help of this architecture, okay. Uh, we have, some, uh, I'll tell you this, okay. Uh, uh, I'll tell you the uh, result first, then I'll go with the complete architecture, okay. As I said, this is a com combined language of uh, C++, uh, you know, object-oriented principles and uh, command language. So we have an interpreter with the supported of libraries of C++, okay? And hence, the, it's, it's a combined language, okay? Whatever the program you're going to write, that will be the input for this interpreter, okay? This interpreter will exclude the program with the help of the C++ libraries. Okay, whatever the program you're going to write, that's called as input for this, you know, architecture or input for this uh, system and the output, what you get is called a simulation results. Okay, uh, this part, uh, that part is called as, uh, you know, combined part of two important languages, that is what is still interpreter we require and that will automatically run with the help of C++ supported libraries and the program which you're going to write, it's called a script. And the output what we'll get is called a simulation results. Okay. What type of outputs we'll get? Obviously, we'll get animation. Okay. I think you people know about animation. What the uh, meaning of animation? Animation is nothing but uh, the movements of the nodes or uh, movements of the graph, movements of the packets will be there. Correct? No. So, uh, as I said, you people that I am constructing, uh, uh, you know, the uh, network animation things with the help of the simulator. Correct? No. So, hence we require animation file. And that animation is, I think, you know, uh, that is Tom and Jerry animation kind of thing and all. So the, similarly, some kind of a similar kind of animation we can able to build with the help of this, you know, part of the simulation result. And that is called as network animation. You can see here. And the second part of the result is called as analysis. How the analysis can be done? Analysis can be done with the help of, you know, uh, why we require the analysis? At what time, how much amount of data sent? At what time, how a packet has been dropped? At what time, you know, which protocol they had used? All the details can be analyzed with the help of one of the finest file, what we have called as 
trace file. Okay, the first output of your simulator is animator file. Why we require the animator to see the output? I want to see, right? For example, I have uh, uh, four laptop device and uh, four, you know, uh, mobile device. I want to connect all the things. I want to check whether uh, uh, the network is working fine or not. What are they, uh, what I want to see in the output actually first? I want to see the animation. Animation why we require to simulate. Okay, animation why we require to simulate. I mean to say to visualize the output. I want to see the output. Okay, and why we require analysis? Uh, okay, I have uh, four laptop devices, as I said, and four you know, uh, four uh, mobile devices. Okay, from the first laptop, I want to send the data to the last mobile device. I want to see which laptop uh, at what time, how much amount of data. Uh, using which path, all those analyses can be done with the help of one of the finest file, what we have called as trace file, trace file, okay. We'll see all the details in the uh, uh, upcoming uh, things, uh, upcoming, you know, flights, the greater details of each and every point, okay. Animation required to visualize the output, to see the output, and analysis required to, anal I mean, trace file required to analyze the output. The third output is there, and that is optional output, it's called as graph. Okay, by default, NS2, we have a default graph called as X graph, X, X, Y, Z, that X, okay, X graph, okay, why it's called as X graph, it's the name of the graph, okay, it, to make the graph, graphical tool used in NS2 is different from the other tools, they had used X graph, okay, we'll get graphs in Excel also, we'll get graphs in MATLAB also, and other simulator tools, correct, no? So, in the, similarly, in this, you know, uh, NS2, uh, NS2 also, we'll get, we have the default, you know, graph tool. That tool is called as X graph tool, okay? So, these are the uh, basic things you, are, you require to know about this. One is analysis can be done, followed by network animator. Uh, uh, I mean, network animator to see the output, analysis, the trace file to uh, analyze the output. And the third is called this graphical tool. Why we require the graphical tool to compare and to contrast? Okay, I want to compare the first network with the second network. Okay, I want to check out how much you know uh, data sent in first network and how much data sent in second network. Those comparison can be done clearly with the help of graphical tools. We'll see all the things uh, hands on also. I'll show you, show you the uh, you know, execution also. Uh, let me study before going with the two combined language. Uh, I'll give you the basics of command language first, okay? And anyhow, you people know some basics of object-oriented language and uh, like uh, what is an object, how the object will be created, uh, how the object will be created and all those basic things uh, we'll see that uh, I think you know some basics of it. I'll go, I'll, I'll also deal with those things later. Right now we'll study what is TCL and how this language works. Command language. Can you please uh, uh, command language? Some of the examples are uh, like uh, copy command or it might be date command and all. Let me show you something. Okay. Uh, this is a terminal. Okay. We'll call this as terminal. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what is uh, uh, in case of command language? In case of command language, uh, for example, I want to see the you know list of files. I'll I'll give a command called ls. I'll have some files, correct? No. So I want to give uh, files like I want to give uh, a list of uh, files with proper you know the option. I'll give space minus l. I'll give. Okay. What I'll get? I'll get the permission. I'll get uh, right read all the details of it when it was created and all. Okay. Correct? No. So in this example, what we observed, ls is a command, space minus l is an option. Let me give in this way, ls without space minus l. Will I get the output? No, I won't get the output. What's the error we are getting? Command not found. Okay. Then what is very important in command language? The space plays a very, very important role. Correct? No? Space plays a very important role in case of command language. Okay. So that is very, very important uh, thing you have to remember. Uh, in case of uh, uh, this command language, okay, and I'll call the ls as command space whatever the arguments you are going to give options arguments both are one and the same. They are called as arguments, and each argument has to be spaced uh, uh, should be spaced between them. Okay, if I have not given the space, it will be given error. That is called uh, space, and space plays a very very important role in command language. I'll give one more example, okay? 
I'll give one more example. Uh, how uh, in case of C language or C++ or any other language, uh, what is the syntax of creating a variable? I have a, I have a, a value phi. I want to assign the value phi to some variable. What is the syntax? Int a is equal to phi. Correct? No. We used to do that. Int a is equal to phi. Okay. Uh, for example, we used to do that. What is that? Uh, we used to do like this, uh, something like this. Correct? No. That is set. Uh, for example, in case of C or C++, int uh, a is equal to phi with an uh, operator called terminator. Okay, So this is called as initialization. I want to do this in case of command language. I want to do this operation with the help of command language. What is the command I have to use? There is one of the fantastic command, my dear friends. It's very, very important in case of NS2. The command is called as set command. Okay, Very, very important command. I can call it as set command okay how many arguments uh, as we all know the syntax of uh, command language uh, you know command followed by space followed by argument number one space followed by argument number two space followed by argument number so on whatever the number of arguments it consists of let me consider a set command how many arguments required for set command two arguments remember okay the first argument is called as a variable name and the second argument is called as a value for that value for that okay uh, whatever the value you want to assign to a that will be uh, this this value whatever the value you have no i want to assign this value to this variable okay so you have to separate those two variables with the help of those two uh, arguments with the help of spaces very very important okay so that is one more important thing uh, for this example let me create two files okay let me call one dot txt an example I'll, I'll write something, uh, for, for example, hi, okay? So I had created, I'll go back, okay? I'll create the second text called as, uh, I think you all know, uh, I forgot to uh, say this. What is this VA? VA is an editor, okay? We, we have many editors, V editor, G edit, foo edit, many editors are there. If you go for Python also, we have different editors. We have a lot of editors, whichever you are comfortable, you can use that editor, okay? Let me create the second file. And what is this TXT? txt is nothing but a text file. No, so I'm not happy with text file. I'll create something else. You create whatever you want. Okay. Two dot txt. Let me uh, give some data like how are you an example, an example, some data I'm writing. Okay. I'll go back uh, this to this mode. Okay. So I want to copy the content of first file to second file. What is the command I have to use? Copy command is cp in case of Linux. Okay. cp space one dot txt uh, followed by two dot txt. What is the importance here? I'm copying the content of second file to first file. I'm copying the content of second file to first file. We will get the error. Why we are getting the error? The reason is that I have to give the space. What is important here? Space is important. That is a uh, uh, very, very uh, out of this. What is CP? CP is a command. What is this 1.txt? Source. I mean, destination. What is this 2.txt? Source. Whatever the contents here, that will be copied to 1.txt. Okay. So this is, uh, uh, I, I don't want to make you to show the execution of copy command. My intention is I want to make you to learn in case of command language, space plays a very important role. Okay. So uh, uh, in the similarly, if I want to, uh, uh, I had declared the value of a is equal to five. That with the help of a command, fantastic command called a set command. How many arguments required for set command? Two arguments, which are those variable name, space, value. Okay. I want to use that A in case of your, uh, you know, uh, C++ or Java or Python or whatever. What uh, or C? What what will be what will be the syntax commonly in case of C, C++, Java and all or .NET? The common syntax is I'll use that A directly. Correct? No. For example, I want to add uh, C is equal to A plus B. I want to add. What I use? I'll use that content directly. But in case of command language, if I want to use the content of any variable. Please make a note of this content of any variable. I have to use a very important operator called as dereferencing operator. Okay, which operator? Dereferencing operator, and that operator can be represented as symbol. Okay, that operator can be represented as dollar symbol. Okay, what is the meaning of this then? Set B space dollar A. I'm assigning dollar A to B. No, I'm not assigning dollar A to B. I'm assigning the content of A. What's the content of A? Phi. Understood? I'm assigning phi to B. Okay. So what is the value of A now? Phi. What is the value of B now? Phi. Understood? This is the meaning of you know, assigning the value. And this is the meaning of content of a variable. Content of 
or variable okay uh, so this are this are very basics which are very much required uh, when you uh, keep on uh, learning the things and all this are very much required for you people and the, uh, next we'll go for this are uh, uh, this are all about variables let me go with some procedure okay procedure will call in java or in it might be in net and all in case of your you know c plus plus or c and all we'll call it as function okay procedure function method all of them in the same okay what is the meaning of procedure why we require procedure to make the life simple correct not instead of having a very large program with an only main method or main function okay, completely embedding everything in a single file i want to divide the complete program into small small fragments and such fragments are called as procedure commonly correct no so as i said all this follows what command language what is required space is required so if you want to implement procedure in command language what i require procedure command what is the command for using the procedure proc understood like what is the command i have to use here the command to execute the procedure is proc space what is the first argument i am passing the name of the procedure what is the first argument the name of the procedure space very very importantly space open brace and call followed by close brace what that consists of any arguments if you want to write any arguments if you want to write same thing same thing as of here the you know uh, object oriented language like for example i want to write it as int okay main for example i want to pass two things or else i want to go with not main int add i want to add two things what i'll do int a comma int b right so this is syntax right and similarly in case of your procedure if you want to do with any procedure i don't want to mention any kind of data type by default it will take integer by default whenever it require it will take fraction i mean to say uh, you know decimal points and all floating values and all by default it will take okay so whenever i want to pass any arguments i have to use the syntax okay and if i want to begin the syntax in case of uh, c or c plus what i'll do i'll give the open brace correct no so if i want to close a uh, close the you uh, know method what i'll do i'll write some uh, uh, very very important things and all i want to close this what i'll do i'll close like this correct no? same thing okay but in case of here in case of your you know object oriented languages i mean uh, command language we have to use a syntax of command language syntax how to use a command language syntax the command uses proc followed by the name of the procedure followed by open brace and close brace which consists of the arguments followed by a space followed by open brace that brace is the point where your procedure begins okay that is a spa uh, place where the uh you know uh, procedure begins okay if you feel like let me write the procedure very neatly shall i write this brace in the next line open this in the next line? no immediately you'll get a syntax error it's not about looking the beautification of the program and all we are talking about the spaces command language correct no so how many arguments required for procedure name of the procedure followed by set of arguments followed by beginning of the procedure in the same line in the same line you will see all this beauty in your programs when i go for the example uh, you can understand very clearly okay so and you can close wherever you want but begin should be in the same line if you put the same brace in the next line what the error will get argument must sing correct no because procedure requires three commands three arguments okay procedure command requires three arguments but you had embedded only two obviously it will give the error okay so indirectly i'm using one more set of uh, within that i had written uh, set command how many arguments required for set command two how uh, which are those variable first one second one is value don't worry about it might be 10 lines of value don't get you know worry about the value size and all okay the content of this i i want to put the content of this to this variable that's all this content let me see later i don't know what it is understood okay so now let me analyze okay hey, don't worry about this expr or the uh, square root don't worry about all those things okay so what i require do what i had mentioned dollar a into dollar a plus dollar b into dollar b we all know what is dollar what is the dollar here d referencing operator or else content of a into content of a plus content of b into content of b what is the content of a phi wait right, an example in this case we will take the example of phi itself okay phi into phi plus what is the content of b phi how we know because b also assigned with the help of the value a 
correct no phi into phi so it will co comes up with some value okay that square root they are mentioning okay that square root if you want to use expression in line x we have to use a command called expr okay if you want to use square root in line x we have to use sqrt this correct no this is a mathematical expression so i am using the uh, you know uh, you know uh, command called expr okay so square root sqrt okay so don't worry about this large content so this is the very last no don't worry about that whatever the things we have that will be assigned to a variable name that's all i don't want to worry about what it consists of and all okay so this value output where we are returning here return i don't want to return the alphabet c to to the display screen i want to return the content of c i want to return what the content of c hence i am embedding here dollar c clear and puts same as of your printf statement what you are uh, used in your you know uh, uh, or system dot out dot print in java or uh, c out in java, c++ uh, kind of thing or print in case of many languages just print so in, in here we have to use puts okay whatever the double quotes are embedded all the things will be displayed on the screen okay if you have used brackets this is a function call this is a function call what is the name of the procedure diac correct no that what is this three comma four a uh, three space four sorry sorry for that not comma space three comma space four these are the arguments okay this three will be i mean this a holds a value three and this b will hold a value four clear okay let me analyze as a will hold a value three b uh, will hold a value four what is three into three nine plus what is four into four sixteen correct now sixteen plus nine how much twenty five correct now square root of twenty five Five. So what diagonal of three comma four, all right, uh, whatever is that output we are displaying. I hope you got. So this is the method. I don't want to explain the content of the logic of the mathematics. Okay, I want. I I, I am very intended to uh, get to know the people how exactly commands works, how exactly space works. Okay, this is the basics. Okay. Similarly, we have loops. Similarly, we have. Uh, other things okay let me consider the first example as loops okay a loop consists of uh, uh, for example a while loop okay uh, we all know that uh, pre condition loop post condition loop uh, iterative loops and all a uh, while loop consists of how many arguments two arguments which are those condition all command language it will work as of command language okay while consists of two parameters or two arguments first argument second argument understood for consists of how many arguments four arguments initialization uh, condition increment or decrement beginning of the for loop in the same line okay same line if you have any doubts at any point of time you can put up in your chat window i mean in the comment section i can able to repeat or i, I can able to help you people okay so we have to go with the iterative loop as for loop or while loop with the help of command language only okay if you have not given the space here immediately it will uh, show you uh, error that the argument missing okay this consists of a sample example this consists of all the things i mean to say all uh, for uh, i mean all the iterative loops let me analyze okay uh, what is the pro procedure command requires three arguments proc space what is the first command T uh, test name of the procedure space or the second command set of arguments space or the third command beginning of the procedure in the same line in the same line okay so okay and now we had used set command how many arguments required for set command two arguments variable name value for that don't worry about all those things what is that value and all let it be okay third command same similarly we have c and d with the same command called set okay and uh, for for loop also requires how many commands four commands that is initialization uh, increment or decrement i mean condition increment or decrement beginning of the for loop in the same line okay and if statement requires two commands condition beginning of the if statement in the same line okay so this is the way how we can go with and ultimately this will get a value once we call okay so we are calling the command uh, i mean procedure here without any arguments because i'm not passing any arguments here right i'm not passing any arguments here so i can use as it is as test okay so this is a simple example uh, to explain you people how the command language works. So 
I'll make you to uh, execute. Uh, I, I mean, I'll let me execute few examples uh, before going for the uh, next actual coding of your TCL scripts. Okay. Uh, so let me check out uh, where it consists, uh, where it is present. Mm -hmm. One second. Okay. Okay. Uh, again, CD is also a command, correct? No. So it will make you to uh, go, uh, I mean, change the directories and all. CD, if I give down given space like this, it will not work. Why? Because CD consists of two, uh, I mean, first argument, CD space dot dot. This is a very, very important thing you have to remember. The CD, let me go within the desktop, within that, uh, I think my name, I guess. Okay. Unless uh, CD uh, D1, let me go with some small sample example. I'll, I'll tell you uh, how to do that and all. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, we'll see uh, one of the example. Uh, which I can able to explain you people. Uh, I'll use gedit first dot. I don't know whether I had used TCL or uh, okay. Uh, this not fine because I had not explained this. Okay. 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 Uh, quickly, we'll go with the uh, you know uh, TCL also. Then we'll come back for the execution. Okay, uh, this is what we I had explained about the basics and how it works. And now we'll go within your actual working of your you know uh, TCL scripts. Okay, these are the things what the basics or uh, what I thought. Uh, uh, what I'm explaining right now is some of the basic steps which are required for TCL scripts. I mean to say network simulator scripts. Okay, the first step of your network simulator or NS2 script is we have to create an event scheduler. Okay, very, very important. You have to know it very particularly. Okay. One of the biggest class in case of Java, which is a main class, Java itself. By default, Java itself is a main class. Within that only we have compile, you know, container, panel, and other things. All those put together, we have Java. Okay. Hence, we are going to use Java as an interpreter. Okay. In the similar aspect, we have the main class, very, very main class of the complete network simulator, simulator itself. What is the class name? What is the important and very important class name? We have a class name called as simulator. This is a class name. Understood? The main class of your network NS2 is simulator itself. As I explained, as I explained you people already that uh, in the architecture had uh, already explained how what are, what are required for me to get the output. One is animation file I require. One is Price file I require. Correct? No? Very two important things are one is animation file, one is trace file. Correct? No? So let me go within the code now. Okay, how that works. Okay. So uh, the first thing is I had created the event scheduler. Within that event, uh, I mean to say, uh, or uh, I mean small uh, open box will open. I mean small tab will open. Within that, I have to make some notes to create, I have to make some activity. Then only I can see the animation, right? So two important files I have to open. Which are the two important files I have to open? One is animation file. What type of animation we have in NS2? Network animation called as NAM. Okay. The second important file is called as trace file. Why we require the trace file? To analyze the output. At what time? How much amount of data transferred? How much amount of data received? All those things can be analyzed with the help of trace file. Okay, so I had uh, created the event scheduler. The first step, please remember the steps, which are very, very important. Okay, well, I had created the simulator step, uh, first uh, step called as uh, simulator class or event scheduler. I had created this simulator class, it's also called as event scheduler. I had already explained. Okay, within that, I'm creating two important, I'm opening two important files one is animation file, and second one called as trace file. Clear, and to see the animation or to have a trace file. 
I want to make some nodes to create, or else it will be an empty site. It's same as an empty site, correct? No? So then, uh, if I have some buildings, uh, first floor, second floor, I can able to do, I can able to see the, uh, uh, you know, uh, animation. So what I have to do now, I have to create the nodes. I have to create the nodes. I have created two nodes. For example, no, node is nothing but you don't get confusion with the words. Interchangeably, we may use node, machine, system, sender, or receiver, or whatever. All are one and the same. Node is nothing but N O D E. Node is nothing but an empty device. Okay. If you would have add up some routing mechanism, we'll call the same node as router. If you would have add up some switching operation, we'll call the node as switch. If you would have add up some you no know, uh, some uh, memory and all, we'll call it as a machine. It might be laptop, desktop, or mobile device. Okay. Don't get confusion with that word. Node, technically speaking, don't have any meaning. Node is nothing but an end device. That's all. Okay. So I have two nodes. I have two mobile devices. Let me call the node one as first mobile device. Let me call the second node as second mobile device. What the next step I have to do? Simply keeping such node will make it work. No, we have to connect those nodes. Correct? No. If I connect the those nodes only, we can able to. We can able to. If I connect those nodes only, we can able to send the data. We can able to see the output. Do I have to uh, create the connection? Once I created the connection, how to create the connection? I'll tell you all the details, all the details one by one. Okay. Once we create the nodes, once we you know set up the links, I have to. Uh, how to set up the links? I have. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, I mean to say that two nodes are created. Between two nodes, I set up the link. And what are the parameters of the link? How much? What is the you know bandwidth it it will utilize? Okay. What is the space it required? How much delay it's going to have? All the details will be done with the help of set up the links step. Okay. The next step is called as setting up the links. Okay. The next step, what we are called as configure the traffic type. I'll tell you very very important thing. Okay. Even uh, uh, I think your teachers also said in their class, uh, we are working on. Application layer, for example, I am I am using Facebook, I am using uh, Instagram or whatever. We are, we are on application layer. If the application layer want to work finally, which is the fundamental layer which we will we require transport layer, correct? No? Without transport layer, any application will never work. Okay. If the application layer protocols to work finally, there will be a support of underlying layer called as transport layer. Which are the two protocols we can have in the transport layer? UDP and TCP. Correct? No. So, what is the major thing we have to remember? We have to configure the traffic type in transport layer. Okay. If the transport layer protocol want to work, means we require application layer protocol. We, we can use application layer protocols also. Okay. So, these are the five step. I'll tell you the other next or uh, three to four steps in the next slide that we recall. The first step is. We have to create the event scheduler, and we can call it as a simulator big class, main class. Okay, and within that simulator class, I'm opening two important files. One is animation file, and second one called as trace file. Why we require the animation file to see the output? Why we require the trace file to analyze the output? Okay, and the third step is called as we have to create the nodes. Okay, why we to create the nodes? So, what is the use of creating the nodes? To see the output, something should be happen. No, to see, correct? No, so there should be nodes. Simply creating the nodes will work. No, we have to set the links between the nodes, correct? No, once we set up the links, I have to configure the links. What is the band bandwidth? What is the simulation delay? All the details has to be embedded for the links. Okay. Followed by the next step is called as I have to configure the traffic type. Okay, what is the meaning of traffic type? I, as I said, you people, uh, you people already that if any application has to work only when the transport layer protocols will support. Correct. Only two protocols we have in the transport layer, which are those one is TCP and one is UDP. Okay. So the next step is called as we have to set the time of traffic generation. I mean to say. If I want to use the traffic generation, there will be a possibility of sending the data to the outside world. Outside world means nothing but internet. We all know it. Okay, application layer is the topmost layer of your OSI model or TCP slash IP model that will be in your machine. An example. Okay, if you want to connect to the outside world or somebody else, you have to go with traffic generation of the application layer. Which are the traffic generation can, uh, protocols we can have? One is CBR and one is FTP. 
okay uh, you may have a confusion so we, uh, we have only two protocols but in our class uh, they said many protocols yes we have lot of lot of protocols in application layer okay some of the examples are http uh, smtp many protocols we have many protocols we have out of those compatible protocols that are uh, that are using in commonly in network simulators are cbr and ftp okay what is cbr constant bit rate okay or what is the meaning of constant bit rate in the regular intervals of time i have to send the same amount of data for example in the first iteration if i'm sending uh, 10 mb of data in the second iteration i have to send the same amount of data in the third iteration i have to send the same 10 mb of data uh, there will be opposite uh, protocol what will be the name of the protocol obviously vbr called as variable bit rate where we can vary the size of the data okay along with that we have one of the finest protocol of the transport layer called as ftp protocol okay ftp protocol stand for file transfer protocol okay why we require file transfer protocol if we want to transfer a small size of file we have to go with file transfer protocol if the file size is very large we cannot able to send the data with the help of file transfer protocol we have to go with one more protocol Called as TFTP. What the meaning of TFTP? Trivial File Transfer Protocol. I hope you got the logic of this. There are two important pro uh, which product, which layers I'm speaking about. I'm talking about application layer. Okay. If this application layer want to work, which are the two supporting protocols we require? Transport layer. Which are those? One is TCP and one is UDP. Now I'll teach you one more thing. One important thing. Okay. There's a couple. Couple. I'll call it as couple. But it's not constant that they have. We have to use. the same logic but we can change the logic also but commonly with the majority of the researchers they executed the programs with the help of this logic only clear what is that is if i am using udp in the uh, uh, transport layer if i am using udp protocol datagram protocol i should use cbr in the application layer it's it's like a tie up they have to use okay and so why we have to use the same thing i i'll tell you if i am using tcp in the transport layer i have to use ftp in the application layer so is, is it compulsory we have to use same protocols no but majority of the research i uh, did a uh, rigorous you know uh, work on that and they come to a conclusion that if i am using udp protocol cbr protocol works fine in the application layer if i am using tcp in the transport layer i have to use ftp in the application layer that's mapping it's a kind of mapping okay so once we set up the traffic once we set up the traffic in the transport layer once we uh, set up the traffic in the application layer at last i have to close the simulation correct no i had opened the create data simulation that simulation has to be closed one day i have to uh, you know once i uh, find out the land after constructing the building simply keep on constructing no i have to close it i have to end the construction i have to make the house warming ceremony and i want uh, and the, and they have to leave correct in the same way i have to close the simulation how to close with the help of termination okay i'll tell you all the things the last step of simulation is termination i had open the file here two important files called as nam file and trace file i have to close the, uh, those files also okay so let me go with the syntax now now the beauty of both command language and object oriented language comes into picture i'll tell you what is the first step of simulator as i said in case of ns2 what is the first step i have to create the event scheduler or i have to create the i have to main class called as simulator class correct now so what is the command i have to use to create the object in case of uh, you know, what is the command i have to use in case of object oriented at java new command new is a command or an operator that will be used to create an instance of the class okay many of the students have to understand very basic uh, things why the object has to be created is that without the objects can't we execute the class 100% we can e able to execute the class those objects are not at all compulsory to make the life simple okay for example class student okay class student within the class i have int marks or uh, for example int average function an example okay i want to access that marks and average function is it compulsory to create the object for the class and to access the members no not at all okay an example i I'll, i'll explain you people i think you'll get to know the logic very clearly <clears throat> let me write the class as something like student okay 
I'll 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 create the class. Uh, within this, I'll write it as int uh, marks an example and uh, uh, int and a function called as average function. Average function. Okay. I'll close this. This is a class, basic, simple class. I want to access the members of this class. Is that compulsory to create the object? No. With the help of class name only we can access. Similarly, after regular classes, why we uh, appoint the CS of the class? For the easy operation of the class, correct? No, so for the easy accessing of the class. Okay. If I send some message to CR, he will indirectly or she will indirectly turn to your class. So similarly, instead of using the class name, uh, I think in a real time application, the class names will be not so simple and sweet as student. Okay. In the real time application or database application, it will be very large. Okay. Student, uh, for example, I want to uh, mention a class name. What will mention? Students underscore fifth underscore CSE underscore B. That's a cl big class name. Can I use the same class name every time when I want to use the objects or when I want to fetch the data? No. We have to simplify the operation. How we can make the simplification or how we can create the reference with the help of the object. Correct now? Within this class, how to create the object? Student space, for example, space S is equal to new student of. What is the student of? It's a constructor. It's a constructor. Correct now? So uh, what is this uh, new operator? Whenever I'll use new operator, it's same as of initialization declaration. I can do this also. Okay, I'll do this and then I can do this also. Correct now? This is uh, when a baby born, what will do? A baby has been born. That's all. That is what? It's male or female. I know. That's all. Correct now? After some days, we will allocate some space for that baby, uh, some, you know, uh, some space and we'll give some name for that baby and all. Correct now? So that is what the memory allocation by default will be done with the help of new operator. Clear? In the similarly, in case of command language we have if you want to create any object if you want to create any object we have to use new operator okay uh, uh, for the contrast i'll tell here itself if you want to uh, can we leave the after uh, of uh, i had created the object i had used the object for all the operation can i leave the object as it is no we have to delete the object why we have to delete the objects the uh, reason is that we have to uh, you know why we have to uh, these, the space can be reused by or reutilization can be done by somebody else. This op this mechanism is called a space optimization. Optimization has to be done. Correct? No? I have many registers. One, two, three. I have to add two numbers. Uh, if I use all the three registers, I can add. For example, uh, add R comma, uh, register one comma, R two comma, R three. The two registers will be added and it will store in first register. If I want to add one more number, if you want to add one more number, if you want to add one more number, is that compulsory to use one more register, new register? No, I can use reuse the existing registers already because R1 and R2 are already added. This operation is called as memory optimization. Correct? So uh, how optimal you are, you will be fine. You, your program, programming will be really good. So once object has been created, after utilizing that object, I have to delete that object. In case of C++, we'll use an operator called as delete operator. In case of Java, what we'll do? We're not going to delete the object. By default, memory reallocation will be happen once the job has been done. Automatically, memory will be reallocated. Okay, no need to, uh, you know, uh, you don't want to free up the object and all. By default, it will be reallocated in case of Java and other higher languages. No need to delete explicitly. Okay, so this is what the first step. Now I'll tell you the syntax of command language. Okay, very very important. Okay, one program I'll teach you the very basics of everything. Later you have to you can easily understand the rest of the programs. Okay, what the command I use? Set command. How many arguments required for set command? Two arguments. Which are the arguments? Variable name. Forget about the object in this uh, simulator. Forget about all those things. I'm talking about set command. Command language. What is a command? Set command. How many arguments are required? Two arguments. Which are those? Variable name followed by value. I don't know what is this value. What is this bracket? What is this new? I don't want to know. Right now, I'm using command language. Command language consists of, very simple thing is, spaces separated by arguments. 
Correct now? So what is the command? Set. How many arguments? Variable name, value. Done. My first language, done. Indirectly, second language. What is the second language I'm going to use here? Object-oriented language. Correct now? So how the object-oriented language works? I have to create an object called NS. I have to create an object called NS. Which, within which class I'm creating? I'm creating this object within the simulator class. Understood? How I'm creating? With the help of an operator called as new operator with the help of new operator i am creating in the creating the instance as in this instead of using simulator everywhere if you want to use if you want to fetch whatever the content within the simulator i have to use simulator space that that whatever you are fetching okay instead of using that or dollar simulator content of that instead of using that i can use very small object as in this so is that in this compulsory i have i am comfortable with it called as network simulator. No, sir, I'm not comfortable. Just tell you, yes, I can use it. No doubt. Okay. And this space new simulator. What is a simulator? It's a class name. Remember this. Don't ever, never use this yes in lowercase. Why? Because these classes are not built by me. Okay. They're already built and the class name is in uppercase. Okay. You can check out any Java programs or any higher language programs. All the main class name will be in uppercase only. The starting letter of the main class name will be in uppercase only. Okay. So the object within the simulator class is created with the help of new operator. This is syntax. Okay. Indirectly command language. How the command language works? So it is a command, first argument, variable, second argument, value. If uh, this complete thing will hold by NS. That's all. Okay. This is the first thing. The second important, what is the second step I said? What is the second step I said? The second step is we have to create two files which are those we have to open two files which are those animation file and trace file <coughs> how those file if you want to open any file in case of c plus plus java whatever how the files will be opened f open if you remember the functions we have functions called as f open f open f close and all correct no if you want to if you want to if you want to create, for example, let me explain this in greater details. Okay, for example, okay, uh, for example, uh, I think you all know about uh, if uh, in, you know file operation, f open, okay, f close. Uh, if you want, uh, what are the first operation of the file? You can, you can take the regular example. I, I'll take one file, normal file, book file. Okay, uh, what is the first operation? You will go and buy the file. Correct? No, that's the first operation. Okay. That is, I can call it as creating the file. Okay. Not opening the file. Without the file, can you open the file? You have to bring the file from the shop. That is called as what? File creation. There should be a file to open. Okay. The second operation is file open. Okay. What will be the next operation? I can go with any operation. I can add if some uh, sheets can be added. I can remove some sheets from the file. Or else I can modify the sheets in the file. And uh, that operation is called as file modification. What will be the last operation of the file? It's not close to delete. Correct? No. Last but last but one operation will be file close. And at last, the last operation will be file delete. I, I don't want that file. I'll delete that file. How to delete that file? I'll 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 remove that file or, or, or with the help of mem from the memory or whatever. Okay. So I hope you got the logic of this. If I want to, uh, uh, let me go with the syntax of that now. If I want to, if I, uh, okay. If I want to open any file, I have to use a command in case of command language called open command. Okay, forget about that. Let me go with the command language. What's the command I'm using? Set command. How many arguments are required for set command? Variable name, value. Forget about the value, what it consists of. Now, this is first language. What is the second language? object oriented language correct no how to create the object how to open a file in case of object oriented language with the help of open command understand what is the command if you want to open any file open command what is the first file I have to open one is animation file and one is trace file all the animation files will be having an extension of dot nam all the animation files will be having an extension of dot nam all the trace file will be having an extension of dot tr as we as we in case of java dot java right in case of c dot c similarly in case of if you want to represent an animation file I have to use dot nam if you want to represent the trace file I have to use dot tr 
Okay. So, uh, and what is this out? Name of the file. You can give whatever the name you are happy. No problem with that also. Okay. Out.tr because it's an output file. Out.nam, it's an output file. Animation output. Why, why this nam, nam called as network animation? It's called as network animation. Okay. And after that, I had written an, uh, a space, I had written one uh, word, uh, you know, letter called as W. There are different types of uh, modes in case of files. I think you might have been heard of in case of your lower languages like C, Java, and all. Like, if you want to uh, read a file, I have to use an uh, operator called as R. If you want to write the file, I'm using a uh, access modifier as W. If I'm uh, appending some data or I'm uh, modifying the data, I have to use a uh, you know access specifier as E. Access specifier as E. And similarly, what I'm doing here, I'm opening those files, I'm writing the data to that files. Hence, we have to append a letter called as W here. I have to append the uh, uh, data called as, append the letter called as W. W stands for what? Writing the, I'm opening this file. I'm opening this file with the help of a command called as open. Within this file, whatever the data you're going to write, all the data will be there in a variable called as TF. That's all. The first language, what talks about? Set command, set consists of two variables, uh, two arguments, variable name and value. Forget about that. Second uh, language, what is that? Object oriented language. If you want to create any object, I have to use an operator called as open. Okay, if you want to uh, create a file, I have to use an operator called as open uh, uh, command, followed by all the trace file will have an extension of .tr, all the animation file will have an extension of .nam, and these two files are open with the help of a uh, mode called as write mode. I am writing the data to these files. Clear? Okay. And and, and ultimately, these two files are present in which, which is the main class? Simulator class. Whatever you are going to create, whatever you have, all the data will be in the simulator class only. So I am pushing all the data created by trace file and animation file to simulator class. How I am doing that? Let me go to the next succeeding lines. Okay. Dollar TF. What is the meaning of TF? The variable which we had created. Okay. Content of TF. What do I mean of dollar TF? Content of TF. What TF holds? Out.tr. What uh, NF holds? Out.nam. Correct? No? Content of NF. Content of TF. Okay. I am pushing all these data to NS file. What is NS consists of? Simulator class. What is dollar NS? Content of simulator. Understood? I am pushing all, trace all, all the data written within this trace file to simulator class. I am pushing all the animation data to simulator class. This is called as uh, uh, taking out taking out all the data to the main class called as simulator class. Very very important. Okay, for all the programs, it might be wired networks, wireless networks, semi wireless networks, whatever the networks it might be. You have to use these three steps compulsorily for all the irrespective of the programs. You have to use it. Okay. This simulator class creation, opening the trace file, closing the tra I mean, opening the animation file, pushing all the data to uh, network simulator, I mean, simulator class, pushing all that uh, animation file to simulator class. These lines are compulsory. It's same as of a header files or import statements in Java. Very, very compulsory. Okay. The next step, or the next step, as I said, the next step is I had created uh, all these things. I have to create the nodes. How to create the nodes? If you want to create any node in case of network simulator or simulator class, I have a class, subclass called as node subclass. They, this comes to the feature of inheritance. If you remember, if you want to access the features of the main class, if you want to access the features of the main class, what it'll do? It'll use a property of inheritance. Correct? No? And we can have, a, we'll call in many, many words, parent class, child class, super class, subclass, Okay, base class, derived class, correct? No? Many terminologies. Okay, so if I, as I said, node is a subclass of its class for everything, simulator is the main boss, correct? No? If you want to access the subclass of simulator class, if you want to access the subclass of simulator class, I have to use the property of inheritance, correct? No? And if I have two subclasses, student and the second subclass is, for example, uh, section. Okay, if you want to use section, what I have to use? Student dot section, correct? No? I have to use student dot section. 
or you can uh, inherit the properties with the help of dot operator. And the similarly, if you want to inherit the features of your, if you want to use the features of simulator class like node and all, we have to use dollar and ns. Okay, this is the beauty of your, uh, this is the beauty of your, uh, you know, ns2. Okay, this bracket, what we embedded, that talks about that talks about property of inheritance. What's the meaning of this? This node is a subclass of simulator class. How I know the it's a subclass because I am using dollar ns. What is this dollar ns? Ns is an object of simulator class. Instead of using simulator directly, I am using dollar ns. What the meaning of dollar ns? Content of ns. What the content of ns we have? Simulator. Hence, I am using the subclass called node, which is present in your simulator class. And uh, this is what about your object oriented feature. Let me go back to one more uh, language. What is that language? Command language. What is the command? Set command followed by node name. Give node name whatever you want. It might be a set command comes of how many arguments? Two arguments. Variable name, value. Variable name can be of anything. Give whatever the variable name you want. A, B, C. Usually in case of network simulator, the node name will be given as node 0, node 1, node 2 and all. So you can give those things. Uh, space, the value. Indirectly object oriented language. This follows the principle of inheritance. Okay. This node is a subclass of simulator. This dollar ns talks about it's an uh, instance, so this uh, talks about inheritance feature. Okay. Now I have created uh, two uh, important classes, two important, sorry, uh, nodes. I have created nodes, two nodes. Let me call the nodes as node number one and node number zero. Let me call. Okay. And I have to set up the links between those nodes, correct? No. I have created the nodes. For example, with the help of the syntax, let me take the example of this. Okay. With the help of the syntax, I have to create the, I have created two nodes. How to create the node, two nodes? Let me call the node name as node one, node two, or node one. And let me call the first node as an example, node one, created, okay? Uh, in the sense that I have two nodes. For example, node one is here, and let me call node two is here, an example, okay? If I create these two nodes, it's enough? No, I have to set up the links, correct? No, how to set up the links? The link setup can be done with the help of, I have to set up the links like this, okay? I can set up the links like this. How to create, set up the links? With the help of a step called as link setup. <coughs> How many steps I require? How many uh, parameters are seven arguments? Okay. <clears throat> And all these operations, what we're doing, all these comes under uh, which part? This all comes under simulator class, correct? No, whatever the operation will do, all these comes under which class? Simulator class. So we are using the reference as dollar in this. Okay. This reference indicates we are doing the operation within the simulator class. How many arguments are required for tapping the link? Seven arguments. What is the first argument I require? The type of link. Basically, there are three types of links, which are those? Simplex, half duplex, and full duplex, or sometimes it's also called as by default as duplex. Simplex is nothing but one way communication. Uh, either sender has to send the data or the receiver has to replay the data. Or is half duplex, the sending and receiving can be done uh, at different intervals of time. They can send the data, they can receive the data, but it should be done at different intervals of time. What is full duplex or duplex? Uh, either say data sending and data receiving can be happened at the same time. It's called as full duplex. So the type of link, the next node, this link, this, what is this link? The type of link should be set up between which nodes that should be set up between sender node n one followed by destination node n two. How many arguments for this type of link, sender node, destination node, three arguments. What is the next node, uh, next argument? No, uh, data rate. What is the data rate between the link? That is what is data rate first of all? the number of packets or number of bits sent per time, okay? Any type of data divided by time. An example is a bike caliber, right? Commonly we'll call, no? 100 kilometers per hour and all. It's it's same as of your data rate or caliber, okay? In the same way, data rate, what we have, number of data divided by time is called as data rate, okay? Followed by time. What is this time? How much time required to send the data? That simulation time or delay required. And at last, I have to use one of the important uh, no, part of this link setup is called as queue type. We all know that 
the nodes will maintain a queue, separate queues. Okay, such queues are called as uh, input queue and output queue. Okay, one of the finest queue what we are using in case of network simulator to commonly called as drop tail queue. Or the queue called as what? Drop tail queue. What the meaning of drop tail? Drop tail is nothing but uh, you know a type of queue wherein which the data will be dropped always at the tail part of the queue. Okay. If I send, if if the data bandwidth is somewhat not enough to carry the data between node one and node two, in such situation, uh, the data if it is going to drop means that drop will you can see at the node two part, tail part of the queue. Okay. That is what exactly called as drop tail queue. Okay. So how many uh, uh, you know parameters required to set up the link? Seven parameters. The first is reference to simulator class. Second is type of link. Three types of link: simplex, half half duplex, and full duplex. Followed by sender node, followed by destination node, followed by data rate, followed by simulation time, followed by the type of queue. Okay, we'll see the examples. I think you'll get to understand how they work. <clears throat> and what the next step? Uh, as I said, you people that after setting the links, have to configure the traffic. Okay, have to configure the traffic of the transport layer. Have to configure the traffic of the application layer. Okay, so the traffic layer, tra uh, you know, uh, the transport layer traffic can be uh, done with the help of this. This TCP is one of the protocol that present in a subclass. I think you have heard of the slashes and all. Uh, for example, if you want to check the directories, subdirectories and all, for example, movies within that Canada, within that, for example, certain movie and all, we have slash, correct? No, in the same way, uh, this slash represents class and subclass. Okay, and this TCP is a class that present within the uh, agent class. I, I'll tell you the beautiful aspect of this features here. What I'm doing, I'm creating an object. Whenever I see new operator, its job is to create the object or instance within which class TCP class. What is the name of the object? TCP zero. Object oriented class. Job done. What a command language? Such as a command. Two arguments. First argument is variable name. Second argument is value for that. Okay. See, very very important. I am not. Uh, uh, what I'm doing in the next step. I am doing the reference to simulator class. I am attaching this TCP protocol to the first object, first node. Let me call the node as node one, or else node zero, whatever. I am I am taking the content of TCP. Dollar indicates what content of TCP zero. This TCP zero an instance of which class? TCP class. Obviously, whatever the instance it follows within the TCP, the all the features will be there in this object. Okay. I am taking the features to node 0. Now node 0 becomes which protocol object? TCP object. Remember, again and again, again I'm telling, we are not labeling the node as TCP 0. We are making the node to behave like TCP protocol. Have this in your mind. We are not making the node as TCP 0. We are making the node to behave like TCP protocol. What are the features of TCP? It's a reliable protocol. If I send that data, we'll get an acknowledgement. All the features, all the features will be there in case of this class. Okay. It's not labeling the node. We are making the node to behave like TCP protocol. Remember this. Similarly, if you are to attach that node to the other node, we are going to use a command called attach agent command. Okay. I'm attaching this TCP zero object to an N0 object. Okay. And that N0 object is a class of which class? Node class. This TCP0 is an object of TCP class. I'm attaching this TCP0 to node 0. That's all. Okay. And similarly, we're doing for UDP protocol. And after that, uh, I had not shown the traffic uh, in the application layer traffic. Same as of transport layer, we have to do it. Because as I use TCP, which protocol I have to use now of, of the application layer? FTP compulsorily. FTP compulsorily. If I would have used UDP in the transport layer, which protocol I have to use? CBR compulsorily. Understood? Okay. And at last, after doing all these things, what I have to do? I have to set the traffic size. I have to set the interval all uh, between the nodes. And I have to, ah, yeah. Uh, once we set up the traffic, once we set up the traffic, I have to go for the last step of your simulation. What is that last step called as? Terminating the simulation. How to terminate the simulation? With the help of one of the finest class, what we are called as finish method or finish procedure. What the procedure consists? How many argument consists of? Consists in case of procedure command. Proc command consists of three arguments. Which are those? Name of the procedure. Parenthesis consists of parameterized uh, one. 
followed by the beginning of the procedure in the same line. If I have written this, uh, let me write very uh, syntactically. I mean, let me write the program looks very nicely. If I have written this open brace in the next line, it will be ended with errors. Why? Because argument is missing. Correct? Okay. So what I am doing within the procedure, I am taking out all the objects created. Which are the objects created initially? One is NS object, one is TF object or TF file and one is NF file. Okay. Animation file, trace file and simulator object. All the variables are making it as global. Okay. And at last, and at last, and at last, I am what I am doing? I am flushing the data from the NS file. Okay, flush trace. I think if you would have used C plus plus or C F flush function, we have F flush function, function flush function. And uh, uh, similarly, we have flush trace operator or method that will flush out all the data of the NS object. What, what is this NS object? Which is the first which class simulator class? Whatever you have created, all the things will be deleted. And uh, uh, we have one more important thing is I had opened here, right? I had opened the file. And at last, what I have to do? I have to close those files. Close dollar nf, close dollar tf. Okay. And uh, before doing all the, it's not top down approach or bottom up approach, my dear friends. I never said anything about that. If you want to write this finished procedure in the first line of your program, write it. No problem at all. If you want to write this in the simulator at the last, you can write it. It's not work as of your top down approach, bottom up approach. No. It will work with the help of command language. Wherever you write this, it will be created automatically first. This simulator class will be created automatically first. Okay. So at last, if you want to execute the file, what is the command I have to use? Exec space nam space. What is the meaning of nam? Network animator nam. What is the file name of nam? Out dot nam. What is the meaning of ampersand? Address. Where this out nam uh, out dot nam file has been created, that file should be executed. Then only all this will be done. You don't worry about that. Before executing, I'm closing. It will does. No, it's not like that. Once after executing this, then only it will it will do all this operation. Okay. So this is the way how we can terminate the file. Okay. I hope you got some logic on this. Uh, now I'll go with one example. Uh, okay. And I'll show you one or two execution. Uh, thereafter, uh, uh, we'll have uh, uh, the theory part again. Okay. I think uh, uh, clear command uh, will use commonly to flush out, flush out all the data. We all know it. Okay. So within this wire, we have few programs. Let me go with the first file. Okay. Let me explain that first. What is that? First dot TCL. I think uh, we all know it. Okay. Before that, what is this NS2? I I, I want to explain that first of all. Okay. This. Linux, why I'm using Linux because NS2 is a software. Remember that. What is Linux? It's an operating system. Upon Linux operating system, I had installed Network Simulator 2 software. Understood? Upon Linux operating system, I had installed NS2 software. Okay. So I want to check. I had already installed on this machine. I want to check whether the machine is working or not with NS2. How to check that? by using a very important command called ns. Okay. Uh, I know that it will not work because always you have to go for root operating system. In your respect to classes, your teachers will teach all these things. When you want to execute any program at any time, you have to go for root operator. I think in case of Windows, we have admin and others, right? In the same, similarly, in case of Linux, we have root and others. Okay. How to go for root with the help of a command called sudo sudo Yes, you. Okay. If I give the password, what I have uh, I had given, it will go for. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, so now it has been. Uh, you can see the indication. I had explained this or not. Um, this is a beauty of your, you know, uh, like uh, that's okay. I'll, I'll tell that later. Um, 
uh, immediately when I uh, go to root operating system, uh, root uh, user, immediately the tilde has been changed to hash. I can see this terminal initially. Let me open one more terminal. Uh, one more terminal. You can see here. Tilde here, right? Correct? Tilde and dollar. This indicates you are in some other user. Understood? When it comes to hash, it indicates you are in root. Okay? This is the beauty of Linux operating system. Okay? Now, let me uh, go with the first program. Okay? So I want to check, for example, okay, I want to check whether NS2 is properly installed or not. Many of the people will do a mistake always like this, okay. Without having the installation, uh, simply they'll execute because NS2 will be a, not a constant software, which will be always fine. It will break whenever we want because installation of NS2 to a machine itself is a tedious job, okay. Installation of NS2 to a machine itself is a tedious job. We have a lot of commands to give. Okay, so let me check whether to uh, whether this machine is installed with NS2 software or not. Let me tell you the hierarchy of that. Okay, I'll type if I type NS and press enter, I'll get a symbol called percentage symbol. Okay, if I get the symbol as percentage symbol, that indicates your machine has been installed NS2 perfectly. Okay, clear. Okay, within that, I want to check one of the important file whether the animator is working fine or not. How to check that? Type N A M N A M. Sorry, press enter. We'll get a small window. This window is called as what? Animator window. This tells okay. My system is installed with NS2. Within that, it's also installed with <coughs> animator file also. Clear. Now, uh, once it is installed perfectly, we came to know. We came to know that it's installed perfectly. Uh, let me uh, go with the first execution. Okay, once it is fine, then only we have to go within that particular execution. Okay, let me go with gedit space first dot tcl. All the files of your tcl scripts will be having an extension of what dot tcl. All the files will be having an extension of dot tcl. Clear? Okay. So let me go within that file. Okay. Uh, this is what what we uh, we can have uh, here. Uh, you know, uh, all here uh, uh, the first program of your simulation tool uh, called as first dot What what we have to see here? We have to see uh, the first line as simulation step. What we, what is this? We have created the simulator. Correct, no? After that, what I have to do? I have to open two important files, which are those. One is animation file and one is trace file. Clear? Okay. Uh, what is the meaning of this? It follows the command language, set space, enough space, or some variable name, some value. Within that, I am opening a file called as first.nam. I am opening a file called as first.tr. And I am open with the help of write mode. Nam trace all for uh, na animation, trace all for trace file. I am pushing all the data to simulator class okay uh, you can check out here i return the procedure finish here only it does not mean that once it open it will close no it's not like that it will do all the operation then only it will go for close okay uh, i have to create two files the file names are two nodes which are the nodes node 0 and node 1 which within which class i'm creating within the node class which is a subclass of simulator class how we know that this is a reference to your Simulator class. I can label these nodes $n0 as yes, sender, $n1 as D. It's a label function. I can use label also. I can use color also. I can do all those modifications later. And I have to set up the link between these two nodes. How to set up the links with the help of how many arguments? Seven arguments, which is the first one reference to a simulator class, type of link, sender node, which is a sender node, $n0, sender uh, destination node, $n1. Uh, what is it? dot nmb the bandwidth between the nodes or data rate between the nodes how much data rate we have 10 mb okay mega what is it b stand for not byte bit why bit because lowercase b if it is lowercase m milli bit okay like uh, kind of thing okay what is the meaning of uh, uh, 2ms 2 milliseconds okay the delay and the last you know or type of uh, q uh, this are seven important parameters to set up the link between this uh, node 0 with node 1. Okay, I am using a protocol. I have to set up the traffic, correct? No, 
what are the protocol what, what are the protocol i'm using udp protocol this udp protocol is a uh, class of which class of class which main class agent main class i'm creating an udp instance and i'm attaching this udp to node 0 first node okay and i'm calling one more important thing i forgot to tell if i'm using udp protocol the destination nodes are called as null null okay if i'm using tcp protocol the destination nodes are called as sync remember if i'm using udp protocol the destination nodes are called as null if i'm using tcp protocol the destination nodes are called as sync okay so i am making the node number 1 as sync uh, null because i have created the null zero and i'm attaching that null zero to node 1 okay it's clear now we'll go with after attaching the transport layer protocols what i have to do i have to attach application layer object i am creating the cpr as i said if i am using udp protocol application layer protocol should be cpr if i am using tcp protocol application layer protocols can be ftp clear so cpr is present within a class called traffic which is having a super class called as application okay within the application i have a subclass called as traffic within the traffic i have a subclass called as cbr i am creating the instance within the cbr class and i am attaching that cbr to directly to udp0 means the for the first node initially the same udp0 called it as what n0 later they called it as udp0 and at last we can call it as cbr0 understood i am attaching the it's not about attaching does not mean that just labeling we are incorporating or inculcating all the features of udp and cbr to node 0 okay and at last i am connecting between udp 0 to null 0 what is the meaning of udp 0 n 0 correct huh? and what i am connecting to other node null what is the meaning of what is the uh, uh, meaning of null 0 node 1 i am connecting node 0 to node 1 okay and i want to start the simulation at what time i'm starting if you have not given the start time also by default it will start with a simulation of 0, 0.0 second okay and if by default whatever the finish time you had given you have to give the time explicitly in the programs why it is a event driven simulator as it is a event driven simulator we have to mention the time or closing time explicitly at 2.5 this program or this method will call finish procedure this will this it will call at what time it will call 2.5 second the complete program i forgot to inform you people that the complete program will run with the help of one of the finest command called dollar ns run <coughs> what i mean of dollar ns i'm making the complete program to run with the help of run the simulator class that's fine the complete uh, content of that will be executed okay let me execute this. Let me execute this. How to execute any program in NS2? <clears throat> okay. The command is ns space file name dot tcl. What the file name? First dot first f r i f i r s t first dot tcl. The same file name. What were open? Okay. Once we open, this is, I'll explain you people in a greater details. Please listen carefully. Okay. This window is called as default window of network simulator. Don't ever close this. Don't ever close this in a default window. If you close this, automatically this also will close. Okay. Uh, this will detail, give the details of the version uh, and other things in the greater details clear and what, what about uh, uh, so you have to minimize this so you have to minimize this and what about this part this is the window that is open first dot nam what the name we have given first dot nam that is what your file okay and uh, i'll explain the uh, this is what about your animation window let me explain the meaning of this animation or uh, what are the concepts of this is called as zoom in uh, zoom in and zoom out okay and this if you want to edit anything you can edit okay if you want to separately zoom in the notes i can zoom in and zoom out the notes okay and uh, we have this line is called as timeline this line is called as what 
timeline. Okay. And if you want to relay out, it's not looking nice. If you want to relay out, you can use the relay out or reset, whatever. Okay. So then uh, this are the uh, this is the start of your uh, simulation. This is stop of your simulation. If you want to play backward, you can use this. And this is the speed mechanism. If you want to speed up the simulation or if you want to slow down the simulation, you can use this. Clear? Let me begin the process. What is this? Node 0. Yes. What is this? Node 1, T, source and destination. I am running with the help of very minute seconds. So it's starting. Okay. So the time, if you have uh, speed up this, it will also, this timeline also speed up. Okay. Why it's not sending any data? Why it's not sending any data? Because in the program, one second. In the program, what we had mentioned. Okay, what we had mentioned here, we have to start the simulation. We have to start sending the data at 0.5 seconds, correct? Huh? So we have to finish by 2.5. So we can close this. We can see the window. Once it will, it this becomes, you know, 5. This becomes 5. It will start sending the data. I can check out here. Once it becomes 5, it will start sending the data. It's clear. It is sending the data from sender to destination. Okay. Once this becomes 2.5, this will close the simulation. I hope you got the logic of this. Okay. I hope you got the logic of the first program called uh, how uh, the basic nodes can be created and how we can do this. Exactly when it becomes 2.5. It will close this or finish the simulation. Okay, so this is called as animation window. Once we created the, uh, once we executed the animation window, automatically the trace file will be created. Automatically the trace file will be created. You can check out first dot tr. Okay, first dot tr will be sorry, not this one. Ah, here we have first dot tr will be automatically created. Automatically it will create. Okay. Okay, so this is how the animation uh, window works in case of network simulator 2. Okay, and uh, as I said, uh, one file called a trace file will create, no, automatically it will create by default, it will create. Okay, so the trace file majorly consists of how many, what is this trace file? Why we require trace file? Trace file is to analyze the output. We the data has been moved at what time, how much data, from where to where. As it is a simple node, we can tell we have only two nodes. Some data has been moved from this node to that node. But when we go for the detailed analysis, uh, the node movement is very, very important. Okay. So at that situation, we require the animation, uh, sorry, trace file. Okay. So how the trace file will be uh, uh, done? The trace file operation consists of mainly, trace file consists of mainly 12 fields. How many field it, fields it consists of? 12 fields or the first field event type you can check out here the type of event okay the second field is time the next field is from node okay i'll tell you the greater details of it what is the meaning of event what type of event we have various version various types of events we have uh, if the field is r we can call it as a receive if the field is plus <coughs> we can call it as nq in queues, we have different operations like enqueuing, dequeuing, and all. What is the meaning of enqueuing? Inserting the data to the queue. What is the meaning of dequeuing? Deleting the data from the queue. Correct? No. What is the meaning of draw? Uh, what is the meaning of uh, D? D stands for drop. Understood. So this kind of operation can be have have in case of event. And sometimes some packet has been dropped. We can indicate it. That will be indicated by D. Okay. So the next field indicates time. Okay, my dear friends, it's not so simple to analyze the trace file. The trace file is very large. Uh, how much time we had taken for the first uh, program? 0 0.5 to 2.5. Okay, it will generate the granular level of uh, trace files. That is 0 0.0000001, 0 0.502, 0 0.503. That level of granularity we can able to analyze. Okay, so 
uh, the second column indicates time. You can check out here. 1.356. Okay. Uh, what actually it does 1.3, 1.4? No, it's not like that. Each and every minute time, it will consider how much amount of data will be transmitted from this node to that node or that node to this node. Okay. The next column indicates from node. Next column, fourth column indicates two nodes. From which node to which node? Okay. And for example, I have three nodes: node zero, node one, and node two. In that situation. If node 0 want to send the data to node uh, 2 directly, uh, it will it has to send the data via node 1, for example. Initially, it will send the data from uh, node 0 to node 1. In such situation, it will be 0 to 1. And after some time, it will be 2 to, uh, I mean, 1 to 2. Okay, I will see all those things later. Okay, Packet type, what type of packet? Whether it's acknowledgement or TCP, CBR, what type of packet? Packet size, size of the packet, how much packet you are sending. Flags, no, no need to worry about these flags. If uh, why usually the flags will be there in networks, especially if any researcher or any uh, uh, budding students or anybody, if they want to build up something in this, uh, you know, uh, things and all, they can use this flag fields. Okay, FID stands for flow ID. Why? As this is only one flow, we have only one path between the sender and destination. We can easily analyze. If you have 50 nodes, 100 nodes. And 100 uh, flows we have. In such situation, we cannot able to analyze. In such situation, we require flow IDs, which is a flow number one, flow number two, and all. Okay, Sender address, destination address. Uh, we are not going to use the actual IP address. Okay, We are going to use the address in this fashion. If the node is 3, the sender IP address will be 3.0. If the node is uh, 2, it will be, uh, hey, yes, you can see here. The destination node is 0 0.0. The actual destination is 0, 0.0. But the immediate, I'm sending the data to this 2, and then this 2 will send the data to 0. The final destination address is 0, 0.0. And what is this 15? Sequence number. Why we use sequence number in networks basically to avoid duplicacy, to avoid redundancy. Okay. Hence, we are going to use this uh, you know, uh, uh, 15 here. Okay, uh, Sequence number here. Okay, And the last field, what we have called as packet ID. What the meaning of packet ID? Uh, the individual ID will be given for each and every packet also. That's called as packet ID. Okay. So these are the various fields. How many fields we can have in trace file? Totally five, uh, 12 fields. Which are those? Event type, the type of event like receive, enqueuing, dequeuing, drop, time, the simulation time, at which time, at what time the data has been sent, from which node to which node, from node to sender node, and packet type, the type of packet, the size of the packet, the flags, default flags, followed by the flow ID, followed by the sender address, destination address, sequence number, and packet ID for avoiding the duplication of packets. Okay, So let me see the file. What are the trace file we have? gedit. It's automatically created. I have not typed at all. Okay, First dot. Okay. First dot tr. Let me check out. See the output. Okay, See. If you want to have a transition from 0.5 to 0.6, you think about a granular level of research or granular level of uh, outputs, what, what it's got, okay? Uh, 0.5, 0.50, 0 0.51. To change from 0 0.50 to 51, it's having almost 10 iteration, okay? So this is what, to change to 0 0.6, see, it took this much amount of iteration, okay? So each and every minute things at what time, what flow, how much data, how much flow, everything can be analyzed with the help of this trace file. How many fields it consists of? 12 fields, which are those? First field, event type, simulation time, sender node, destination node, the type of packet, the size of the packet, flags, the sender address, destination address, or the, sorry, flow ID, sender address, destination address, sequence number, and packet ID. Clear? This is what, and this is what the flags, no need to worry about this flags. Okay. See, see about the the file is not so simple. I'll ask you to. I I am uh, in the exam. I'll ask you to uh, ask you to uh, compute number of packet sent. How to compute? Plus indicates what enqueuing. Minus indicates what dequeuing. I want to uh, uh, have a count of number of packets received successfully. Can you count R here? How many R's? You can check it out. Okay. Uh, one R, two R, uh, three, four. Can you count like this? It's not so simple. It's not so simple, correct? No. So how we can do that? This can be done with the help of post processing operation. I'll tell you that in a greater details. Okay. I'll tell you that in greater details. Okay. 
now let me go, uh, let me close that file first let me close that file first okay now let me uh, uh, analyze this okay uh, so uh, I, I i'll take 5 minutes break okay uh, my dear friends we'll take 5 minutes break exactly the time is uh, 3:45 in my watch exactly at 3:40 i'll come back and i'll start your session okay thank you
uh, guys, welcome back. Uh, I'm going to deal with uh, uh, different aspects now. Uh, uh, so far, uh, I think I had explained about trace file and animation file uh, uh, of wide networks. Now, let me go with different examples now. Uh, after that, I'll go with the second category of uh, wi wide networks. I mean, uh, networks called as wireless networks. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so uh, let me go with the second example, how that works. The second example within the wide networks is, uh, uh, let me go with uh, gedit second.tcl, uh, uh, second .tcl, uh, uh, small changes. The first example was with respect to UDP protocol. This example was with respect to TCP protocol. And in the first pro example, I think uh, I'll, uh, the same thing, no changes, everything is same. Only we are using TCP and we are using FTP protocol, okay? So let me ex execute this also and I'll show you. Before that, you please carefully uh, see this, particularly uh, NS, uh, for execution we require NS, right? First dot TCL, please carefully see this. Okay. So please uh, carefully see this. We have flow of data, completely flow of data, correct? No. <clears throat> now you do one more thing. We'll go with the execution of the second one. Okay. We'll go with the execution of the second program of TCP. The first one was UDP. Okay, you same thing, only changes the first one is UDP, the second one is TCP. Let me uh, show you the output of the second one. Okay. We got two lines here. Have you observed that? We got two lines. One is packet ascending from sender to destination and other one is we uh, have the packets which sends from uh, acknowledgement from destination to sender. Okay, that is the major difference between TCP protocol and UDP protocol. In case of UDP, we have only the data sent. In case of TCP, we have the data also sent and we also get the acknowledgement by which for this packet, this acknowledgement, for this packet, this acknowledgement. Yes, the data is raised successfully. Okay, that is a major difference between TCP protocol and UDP protocol. Okay. Let me go with the next example. <clears throat> okay. Uh, okay, a small example. Let me see this. Uh, in case of this example, I had taken four notes, which is the first program of your syllabus, actually. So I am not going to point with the help of the syllabus, I'm not going to explain. Uh, generally, let me, let me explain. As usual, we have network simulator class, uh, animation file, trace file, finish whenever it call, it will be, if, when, when this will be called, at this point of time it will be called, 2.5 will call that function until that it will execute. <clears throat> How many nodes I'm creating here? I'm creating four nodes, node zero, node one, node two, node three. I'll call uh, uh, first node as sender and node one as intermediate node, node two as destination one, node three as destination two, okay? You can imagine the Imagine the you know topology of this. Understood? Okay. So what I want to tell you is this protocol is a combination. This program is a combination of both TCP and also UDP. This is not in your syllabus. I'll tell you. Okay. Both combination. First program with respect to UDP protocol. Second protocol program with respect to UDP pro, TCP protocol. And this is corresponding to a combination of both TCP and UDP protocol. Okay, so that is a major difference you have to uh, uh, remember in case of uh, TCP and also in case of uh, uh, UDP protocol. Okay, and here, and here, uh, we can check out here the connection between node 0 to node 1. The link has been set up between node 0 to node 1. Okay, connection between node 1 to node 2 has been set up, this two nodes, and ultimately, connection between node 1 to node 3. Okay. You can imagine how the protocol, I mean, how the topology looks like, okay? And I'm setting TCP 0 to node 0. Obviously, the first node will be behave like a TCP node. If I'm using TCP protocol, I have to attach FTP protocol of application layer, as I said already. 
and this TCP will be attached. Obviously, the FTP also will be attached to the same protocol, or same node, and the first node will behave like a TCP. Now, for the same node zero, I am also attaching. We are also attaching UDP zero, okay? And for same node, we are attaching UDP at uh, CBR zero. Clear? TCP of the transport layer, FTP of the application layer. UDP of the transport layer, CBR of the application layer. Okay, all these things we are attaching to the first node. Okay, and we are calling the sync node as node two. Node two is a sync node, first destination. Node zero is the TCP sender. Node two is the TCP destination. And I'm calling node three as CBR destination. Okay, node zero as you know which uh, sender UDP sender. Node three as UDP destination. What about node one? It will behave like an intermediate node. Middle node. Okay, so this is just a uh, program what we're taking. Uh, let me, you know, uh, explain. I mean, uh, the help of animation, how it looks like. Okay, uh, somewhere uh, I think I had uh, uh, changed the things. Let me check out. Let me save this and give the clear command. Okay, let me execute this. We are getting an error in the first line. Okay, we'll check out. While explaining, I, I had inserted some character somewhere. Uh, it's not so easy to eradicate small, small, you know, things. As it is a command language, if we if we have embedded a small dot also here and there, it will give an error. Okay. I hope so. You got the logic. Instead of wasting the time, I can explain the next logic. Uh, I guess let me check out uh, that later. Okay. What the uh, uh, extra thing I had added? Okay, no problem. Okay. Uh, now let me go with the next program uh, that is ns fourth dot tcl. Okay, this with the of graph. Let me explain the logic of that. Okay, uh, to check the graph in ns two, I have how many axes are required for uh, plotting any graph? How many axes I require to plot any graph? We require X axis and we require Y axis, correct? We require two axes to plot the graph. Okay, so let me create a dummy uh, file. Uh, let me create a dummy file. A uh, vi space something called a three dot txt. A dummy file. Okay, I'll add up some values here. I'll add up some values. Okay, let me uh, take the values as two. Uh, I'll press i. Okay, I'll press i, and I'll take the values like uh, two. Okay, well, I think uh, I'll go with JDT only, no problem. Uh, okay, uh, G edit uh, 3.txt, an editor. <clears throat> okay, so I'll add up one space two, uh, two space three. Uh, space three and four space five and all. Okay, the uh, how many axes we require to plot any graph? A simple graph we require two axes. The first column always represent the first axis, and the second column always represent the x y axis. Okay, so let me plot the graph. Uh, sorry, uh, let me plot the graph. How to plot the graph? I'll save this file. I'll uh, I'll uh, save this file and I'll uh, close this. 
I'll plot, I'll plot the graph. How to plot the graph? Let me explain you people. <clears throat> okay. Uh, if you want to check the dimensionality of the graph or what are the attributes we can include for the graph, we can use a command called X, G, R, A, P, H, and press enter. Okay. Immediately it will display, I mean, it will display uh, its, uh, no, the graph, it will work. Okay. Uh, so no problem. I uh, will go with the example only. So we have a graph. Uh, so I'll give the input as for graph, it requires an input file. Let me call the input file as t.txt and let me press enter. So this is a graph. Okay. And the first column, what we're embedded, it's a x axis, and the second column, what we're embedded, is the y axis. Okay. Let me give you some modification for the graph because in the, uh, directly, if you would have uh, went for any like kind of you know, uh, network examples of the graph, it will be not so good. So, what I'll do is, what I'll do is, I, I'll, I want to name the graph as, uh, I want to name the graph as, uh, uh, like uh, I want to give a title for the graph. Let me call the title as, uh, title option as minus, uh, I'll, I'll give. I'll give it as minus T for title of the graph. I'll call this as a throughput, T-H-R-O-U-G throughput graph. Throughput. And uh, x-axis name as something like a random example. Uh, some uh, time, okay. And uh, y-axis minus y an option and I'll call it as, uh, you know, uh, let me call the uh, y-axis as packets. Okay. And then space the input file name. Uh, let me take the, uh, like this. Okay. Uh, what the name of the file we had given? What the throughput file? Uh, uh, I mean, what the file name for the graph we had given? Throughput. What, the, what is the x-axis name we had given? Time. What is the y-axis name we had given? Packets. Understood. Okay, so this is the one we got. We, we are required. Okay, so uh, in the similarly, you can do the modification for the graph, whatever you want. Okay, so usually uh, we we wish to uh, plot the graph using the uh, trace file. Commonly, we use the trace file to plot the graph. Usually, we'll use the trace file uh, to plot the graph. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll go with. And uh, I'll go with uh, how to plot the graph using a trace file. It's not so easy to analyze the trace file. So there is a, uh, a post processing operation. I'll, I'll explain this here with the help of this PPT. Okay. So called as post processing can be done with the help of one of the finest tool, what we are called as AWK, A W K. Okay. One of the finest tool, what we are called as A W K tool. And it is most powerful tool and mainly designed for text processing. Okay, and as I said, you people that in the trace file, the trace file is very huge, very huge. Okay, I ask you to calculate the number of packets dropped. You have to check what the first column, all D, you have to count. It's not so easy, it's a huge line. So, there is a method how I can apply this arc script to that to uh, you know, file which file trace file to extract the data whichever I require. Hence, this awk is also called as data extraction tool. What type of tool it is? Data extraction tool. This awk consists of three important uh, block followed by uh, rules block followed by end block. Begin block always consists of begin keyword followed by open brace and whatever the initialization and all we can do in the begin block. And the rules block will write the actual work, our uh, actual data extraction we are writing in this block. Followed by end block. End block consists of uh, closing the things like uh, number of data, whatever the closing we can do in the end block. Okay. Let me go with one example. I want to calculate the number of packets dropped. Okay. So let me begin a variable called as drop is equal to zero. No need to mention the data type. By default, it will take as end. And what I'll do, dollar one, if dollar one indicates, what the meaning of dollar one? First column, the content of first column is, is equal to, is equal to D drop okay we all know it the first column of the trace file indicates the type of events what are the type of events i can have in the trace file first column send receive packet drop 
and packet are same, correct no? R, yes, D, plus and minus. Plus stand for entering the data, packet sending the data, in the, sending the packets in the data, minus indicates packet dropping, uh, deleting the, da the data from the queue, okay? So if it is D, I can indicate that it's a drop packet. So I have to count all the packets. If dollar one is equal to D, I have to take out these two columns. Uh, it's not like that. Whatever the columns you want, you can take out. Okay. So this is the important condition. And end is nothing but the, just a closing statement. Okay. If you want to execute the awk, I have to use a command called AWK minus F. Minus F is an option. You are extracting the fields. Which fields? Applying uh, this awk on which file? This trace file. Okay. Let me explain with an example. I'll get more knowledge on that. Okay. We have many awk scripts here. Uh, let me apply awk script on second file. What a first file or second file? Okay. Let me uh, uh, show you the first awk script first. Okay, uh, let me uh, take the awk script of or which I'll take. I'll take the awk script of throughput dot awk. Okay, uh, let me uh, show you the the awk uh, file and all the awk files will have an extension of dot awk files. Okay, g edit. Why we require the awk script to check out uh, to extract the data from the trace file? Why we have to extract because the trace file is very huge. We cannot able to count or we cannot able to uh, go my do it manually. So we are going with the Ox script. Okay. How many parts we can have in the ox script? Three parts, which are those begin part, rules part, end part. Okay. Begin part, what I'm doing, what we're doing, we're taking the packet is equal to two variables declaration, time is equal to zero. This is what about the rules part. Okay. This is all. This completely what about your rule section. What in the rules rule section I'm doing? Dollar one. What do I mean of dollar one? The first column of the trace file is equal to is equal to R. And what is the logical end indicates? All conditions. Node. What are the meaning of dollar three? Sender node. What are the meaning of dollar four? Destination node. If dollar three is equal to zero and dollar four is equal to one, I have to do this operation. What I have to do? Packet is equal to packet plus dollar six. What are the meaning of dollar six in the trace file? You can remember. I, I hope so. Uh, Uh, that is uh, uh, trace file. Dollar uh, one indicates type. Dollar uh, six. One, two, three, four, five, six indicates packet size. Correct? No. What is the meaning of throughput? First of all, number of packets sent divided by time. For example, I have five thousand MB of data. I will send five thousand MB of data at, for example, two hours, one hour. That is called a throughput. So I want the complete size, complete size divided by how much time. So. What Calculating the complete packet size. Initially, the packet is zero. Plus, what size of packet? If we encounter the first data, I'll add up to this. Uh, for example, 50 MB. In the next iteration, again, if I count, encounter R and sender is zero and receiver is one, I'll add up to that. Ultimately, we'll receive the final value of packet. Correct? No. In a similarly, time also will receive. Okay. So percentage F is float because time will be in the float fashion, and percentage D because the packet will be not in the fraction part. So it will be in the this fashion, okay? And ultimately, I'm displaying the output, the output of percentage of MBPS. Why? Because packet. What do I mean of packet? The total packet size divided by time. That's called as the output. Number of uh, size of the packet divided by respect to time. Why we're taking into eight divided by thousand MB, uh, thousand twenty-four? Because I am mentioning this with the help of MBPS, mega bits per second. What do I mean of mega? Mega is nothing but uh, ten power six. Correct? No. So what I'm doing bits per second. What I'm thinking of bits per second? Bits one byte is equal to eight bits. Correct? No. Mega why why taken because I'm converting that to 1024. <coughs> so we are taking mega bits per second BPS. So uh, if you <coughs> close this and how to execute any awk script? A W K space minus F Space, what is the awk script file name? Throughput.awk space. I'm applying on which uh, trace file? Let me apply on second trace file. Second dot tr. Correct? No, I'm applying on this file. Okay, to extract the data of this. 
So what the files I'm extracting? I'm extracting the data of the time simulation time, the respective simulation time and packet size. Correct, no? So once uh, after doing all this operation, I'm receiving a uh, throughput of 7769.82 something MBPS. Okay. Is this clear? So this is the reason how we can able to extract the data from the which file? Trace file. Let me see the trace file of second. You can uh, wonder how big it is. Okay. Let me uh, show you that. Okay. See this. This is the big size. Uh, we have to count the R. Correct? No? R. 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 It's very huge. It's very huge. Okay. It's not so simple to count. It's still here. So think about the trace file. It's very huge. Okay. Can you able to count all these things? It's not so simple. So we are checking. If the first column is R, take out dollar two time, and it has to take out dollar I think uh, uh, twelve packet ID. Okay, uh, packet ID. Packet ID. Okay. So uh, this is the way how we can apply any trace file uh, using uh, any uh, any awk script using trace file. Okay, that is what exactly we'll do the post processing operation. Okay, and if you learn these basics corresponding to wide networks, you are done. You are totally done. Okay, so the next important thing is, as I said, X graph utility, and we have manual for that X graph also. I'll share you that also later. And uh, this X graph, as I said, X graph is a command followed by the value of X parameter, the value of the Y parameter, and the title of the graph. At last, the file name. Okay, at last the file name. Okay, let me explain you with the help of the same example. Okay, I had displayed, I want to plot this graph. I have x axis values as time and y axis values as the packet ID. How to draw? It is displayed on the terminal itself. Correct? No? How to draw that? I'll explain you people. Please give your attention. Okay, once I uh, executed this, I got the output like this. Correct? No? Instead of, instead of displaying on the terminal, Instead of displaying it on the terminal, what I'll do is I'll redirect for redirection. We have to use a symbol called as greater than symbol. Redirect it to some uh, plot dot something lt dot whatever dot or something txt any input. Okay, I'm redirecting whatever the output it was displaying in the terminal right here itself. I'm redirecting that to one more file. Why I'm redirecting because if you want to plot any graph, that the input should be given with the help of some text file. Okay, all the data which were displaying here, I am redirecting that to this file. Understood? Okay. So now, now let me see that file. What is that file name? Gedit dot lt dot txt. Okay. What is this? We have the output which was displayed on the desktop. I am uh, making it to display. Here, okay, so what I'll do is using that file, using that lt.txt, let me plot the graph. Okay, what's the command for the graph? X graph. Correct? No, I had already plotted. I'll use the same commands. Okay, X graph space. I, I, I wanted to plot the output only with respect to the first column is time, second column is packet ID. Okay, and what's the file name I have to give? lt.txt. Correct? No, that's a file name. But I'm getting the error at which at which line? 29 to the last line probably. Why? I'll tell you. This is very, very important. The X graph can be plotted only for the inputs data that should be number or fraction part. If it is of something else, it will not plot. Okay. If you go for the last line of your uh, you know, code, uh, there is uh, words as throw put 77 something. Can you plot the graph for characters? No, we cannot able to plot. So remove this line. Understood? Remove this line. Now save the program. Now save the file. Okay. And now try to plot the graph. Okay. Give the command called clear. And now plot the graph. Okay. You'll get the output. Okay. So what the file name? What the uh, file name had uh, given here? So put. What is the x-axis name we had given? Time. What the y-axis name we had given? Packets. Okay. So. Now, this is what exactly uh, what we have uh, uh, with the help of uh, you know X graph tool. Okay, 
uh, this is what uh, what we can have uh, in case of uh, you know uh, uh, using the uh, you know uh, this kind of experiments. Okay, so this is uh, this all we are going to do in the other you no know, lab uh, lab access part. As a part of that, we are going to use all these things in your laboratory sessions. Uh, we are going to execute all these things in your laboratory part. And one more thing is very important thing is uh, we have to know about wireless networks. Okay, wireless networks also does the same. Uh, uh, the simulation part, everything is same as of here. The wide networks. The only thing is we have to change the inputs. Okay, so let me go with one uh, simple explanation and I'll stop. Okay, and we'll stop. Okay, so if you have the see this wireless networks, why we require all these parameters? Because wireless networks consists of various properties, various different properties, and except this, uh, the execution, uh, the simulation, the trace file, everything is same. Okay, uh, I hope you, I hope so. You got some knowledge on network simulator basics of networks, uh, network simulator basics. And how the uh, plot can be, uh, you know, graph can be plotted, and all those things I had explained in the session. If you have any doubts at any point of time, I can put up your question. Uh, if uh, no doubts, uh, if any anything to ask, uh, you can uh, uh, put a message to my mail ID. I'll surely help you people. And if you know, if no nothing is there, I'll wind up the session. The wireless networking part, the wireless part. And other uh, rest of the parts, uh, I think uh, your teachers will deal in a class. And if time permits, I'll take up the session again in future. Okay, this is the end of uh, first day workshop on network simulators. Thank you so much, uh, guys, for listening. Thank you so much.